The world of 2021 is ruled by coffee, and Neo London goes crazy for it. They say that in this job only two cases matter, the one that breaks you and the one that makes you, makes you a real cop. I'm Arthur Oliver, and I'm a private investigator, but I used to be a cop here in Neo London. I quit ten years ago. I failed. I hoped I'd never come back here. I read about Richard Kersey's disappearance in the papers on a train journey. Coffee Tycoon vanishes, the front page headline of the Neo-London Espresso screamed. For many, Kersey was a wealthy celebrity buffoon, pure envy. They lost contracts and profits to him. They even lost their reputations as he dragged competitors through the courts. And me? I lost a lot more to him. Catherine, my beloved, and his wife. Ten years ago, Richard was involved in a spot of bother. He had a debt. Unfortunately for him, it was Kath who received the demands for payment. Percy happened to be abroad at the time, totally out of reach. She got scared and tried sorting it out herself. In cash. She asked me for help. I couldn't do it in my official capacity, but I took my gun and set up a sting. It ended tragically. A few days ago, Henry called Richard's old brother. He sounded down, just like me. Okay, I know all about it, Arthur. Quick the force, or still tormented by Kath's murder. Listen, Richard's daughter doesn't have to know anything about you two, nor Richard. But I'm begging you, help me find him. I'll give you a flat to live in, some cash, and a cover story that you're a salesman. Just come, please. So I'm in Neo London again. The business with Catherine broke me. So maybe the case with Richard will be the one to make me a real cop again. Richard's disappearance was big news. There was speculation about mafia involvement. Either Italian or Yakuza. I think there might be something in that. Little Clarabelle, Richard and Kath's daughter. The last time I saw her was at her mother's funeral. I wanted to comfort her. Now it looks like it's her who wants to comfort me. She's so like her mother, especially her eyes. Can't forget watching the life draining out of Catherine's eyes. On the way to the hotel, Clarabelle told me her father might have been kidnapped by an angry competitor. It's a possibility. Percy did all sorts of weird deals with even weirder people. Maybe one of them had enough of Richard's caprices. Over the phone, Clarabelle confirmed what Henry had promised. There was a flat and a position as a salesperson in their family business. That was to make investigating easier. Fair enough. Let it be. If that's what the investigation demands, I'll become the best damn salesperson in Neo London. I'll help Clarabelle with her business. I'll find Richard. I'll find your killer, Kath. I won't let you down twice. Promise. Dear Arthur, thank you again for agreeing to work on this case in such unusual circumstances. As I mentioned during our last meeting, Uncle Henry and I suspect that one of my father's business partners must be involved in his disappearance, or at least know something about it. We believe it would be best to work undercover and meet them offering a delivery contract. It's also better that a private investigation will remain as a secret. Check out the instructions I've left you, and look around in your office. After that, meet me at my cafe. See you soon. Clara Bell Kersey.
Hello, Miss Clarabelle. The cafe looks great, really bright, cozy, homely. Hello. Um, thanks. The decor was my father's work. He was very careful to create a friendly atmosphere. P please don't call me miss. Sorry, it, it's your hairstyle. You look so young, I couldn't help myself. But fine. First names only. Great. Let's get down to business. I want to ask about your childhood. I know there are painful memories, but it's important for the case. All right. I've had time to get some distance on it. How can I help? Tell me how you coped after your mother's death. Well, not too well. Dad hated talking about it. He worked a lot, went away a lot. And me? I remember lying there, crying. Mr. Pensy was with me. He took my temperature, brought me cups of tea. I was alone. Any friends? School psychologist? I had this one friend, Amy. She came to cheer me up a couple of times, but I think I wore her out. I was incredibly shy as a child. The school psychologist sent me to a psychiatrist for medication. I was supposed to go there with an adult, but it never happened. Why? Something changed. Something got better? Yeah, you could say it was thanks to Mr. Van Haven. Hold on, I'll write this down. Who was it? Joseph Van Haven, Dad's friend from college. He and his wife Amanda offered to take care of me, together with his housekeeper. I was to sleep at my home, spend the day with them, mainly with Mrs. Fink, the housekeeper. Dad immediately agreed. And you? Did you have any say in it? I was a bit scared at first, but they were really nice. They were like my family. They still are. Thanks, Clarabelle. That's a lot of help. Can you give me a contact number for Van Haven and Fink? I'd like to ask them a few questions. Sure. Here you go. Great. Who do you think I should meet first? Mr. Van Haven. Visit him posing as a sales rep. Sell him some coffee. He's a really nice guy and a good candidate for checking your abilities. Investigative abilities? Business and negotiating. Remember that you operate under cover and you must be credible. Only then will investigative skills come in handy. So, where do we get the coffee from? The production department sees to that. Um, using the console in your office, you decide how much of a given brand to produce in a given week. You'll be starting with a single type, classic standard. Okay, then what? Later you can start working on other brands because different clients have different needs. It's also worth making production more efficient. It's costly and can hold up production, but it pays off in the long term. You have to keep an eye on production costs and warehouse levels. Warehouse. Okay, I think I've got all that. How do I run my team? It's like this. In the management board, you assign tasks to groups and how many hours per week they have to complete them. Neglecting tasks, i.e. managing production or account management, can lead to production failure or suspension of deliveries. Make sure employees are busy. Okay, what else? Lead acquisition and due diligence will allow you to arrange meetings and get valuable information about your clients that will be useful during a business meeting. Okay, let's say I manage to sell something. What then? You can also assign project management tasks. Each production upgrade or marketing campaign is treated as a project that needs to be taken care of. Staff training helps develop their competences. That's just what I wanted to ask about. Where do I get new employees from? The relevant forms are in the HR department. We always have a few candidates for employment waiting in the wings.
I guess I should also be overseeing the costs and expenses. Where do I find out about that? Finance. A detailed list of income and expenditure is in the profit and loss account. What if there's nothing in my account and I need a loan? You can borrow money, but only up to the company's debt limit. Clarabelle, did you ever hear of a detective in debt? Nope, but I've read of a few. What if I need to advertise a product? I might get to more people that way. Advertising campaigns are available from the marketing department. Remember to choose the right campaign type for the specific brand of coffee. A well-chosen campaign will increase brand awareness and demand for your products. After my first meeting, I might need a campaign like that. Just a little one. Have more faith, Arthur. We'll do some more negotiating training first. Seeing as I'm managing people, I'll have to assess their work and look after them. How do I learn how to do that? Everything about HR matters can be found in metal cabinets. First of all, make sure to motivate your staff. It improves their work levels. Dissatisfied workers work badly and often leave. Let's move on. Can I train a team like you're training me now? Sure. In this same section, you can access lessons on improving your employees' competence. I don't really know the London coffee market. In fact, I don't really know anything about any market. How do I work out what coffee to produce and who to sell it to? Where do I find information about current and potential clients? In the sales section, look into the computer. You'll find contacts to clients, what brand of coffee they buy, and whether there is an appointment arranged. Let's say I'm feeling well prepared. What then? Then it's time for a business meeting. Just dress up right and get to the right place on time. Ah, one more thing. Let's say I sign a contract on poor terms. Then I become a better negotiator and I don't like the contract anymore. Can I break it? During the meeting, you can always opt out of signing the contract or simply stop the conversation and leave. If after signing, you do not assign employees to service the contract, the client will terminate the cooperation after some time. I know everything now. Yes, we have to practice contract negotiating. As it happens, I need a fresh delivery. Let's role play the scene where you offer me a contract. Ready? Couldn't be readier. Let's start. I think I'm ready. Let's try a negotiation and point out anything I get wrong. And when I recover from that, you can give me some more tips. Okay, let's begin negotiating. Good morning. I've come to talk about supplying our coffee to you, but if I'm going to talk about coffee with such a lovely lady, it will have to be over a coffee. Oh dear, Arthur. Complimenting my appearance or flirting with me really isn't a good idea in a business context. I know you meant to be nice, but someone else might take it differently. Very differently. <laughs> good morning. Is that coffee cake? Mmm, that smells good enough to stop traffic. Really? Thanks for saying so. We just finished baking it. Here it is. Wow, it looks better than it smells. Did you make this, Miss Clarabelle Kersey, I presume? I've come to talk to you about coffee supplies. Not bad, Arthur. A well-judged compliment can work wonders. But some clients don't like them. Now do you see why doing your research on the customer is so important? Yes, I knew you liked baking cakes, so I could mention it, but it's only a small thing from your private life. Precisely. Everything can be useful during negotiations.
Uh, okay. I got this. Good morning. I've come about your coffee supplies, namely the classic standard. We can offer competitive terms and, uh, what was next? No, if you start like that, there's no way you'll succeed. You have to be prepared for negotiating and know what to start the conversation with. Improvising is okay, too, but it has to be snappy. I can do snappy. Great. Show me. Good morning. As we agreed, I've prepared a contract to supply classic standard coffee. Would you like to go over the details? That's not too bad, but clients don't always want to get right down to business. It's worth creating a friendly atmosphere and demonstrating goodwill. You want to try? Friendly and goodwill. That's me. Can we move on to establishing the terms of the agreement? What does a contract like this look like? Here's a standard contract. Here, look. Good. That looks acceptable. Be prepared that the client will want to renegotiate the terms here. Assume that they're going to ask for a price lower by this percentage. How are you going to persuade me your offer is already attractive enough? Let's look at the price in relation to quality. Everything about our coffee's top drawer, taste, aroma, and certification. Coffee like that at a price like this is a real bargain. Let's assume I will agree for such discount. Every supply claims his or her coffee is the best. How are you going to support your claims so they don't come across like empty boasts? Hmm, some facts and figures to prove that this discount is a sensible bargain. There you go, Arthur. That's how you support your credibility and generate client trust. But it would be better if you actually knew some data. For a first go at negotiating, that went pretty well. Let's say I'll sign the contract, but I have one more proposal, the first month's batch for lower price. Agreed? Okay, it's a reasonably big order, so I guess we can do that. The client is sure to be happy, but does it still pay for you? Conceding too easily to surprise conditions can cost you a lot. Okay, you've got me there. I'll remember that. I think that covers everything. Now it's time to put it into practice, both as a business person and a negotiator. Make sure you swat up on the materials and look at this week's tasks. Thank you. I'm sure it will all prove helpful in this investigation and in finding your father. See you soon, Clarabelle. Thanks, Arthur. It means a lot to me. Now it's up to you, and I think you're the last hope I've got.
I should sum up what happened after that meeting. Someone important lives here. That's what the Kersey homes seem to be saying. This is where the investigation begins. Walking in, Clarabelle hugged herself. From the cold? Cute. Clarabelle only slept here, though. After her mother's death, she was taken in by Joseph Van Haven, her father's friend who treated her like his own daughter. His wife tried. Mostly, though, she left her to the housekeeper, Mrs. Fink. Why did the Van Havens raise the Kersey kid? A friendly favor? Guilt. The servant greeted Clarabelle with a stack of unopened letters. She stuffed them into her bag and went inside. A lot to catch up, I joked, and Clarabelle explained that she no longer lives in the residence with her beloved. I asked for a family photo of the Curseys. There was an exotic-looking guy in the midst of a sea of pale Brits. Mr. Gabriel was an artist who taught Clarabelle to draw. He looked pretty stiff, probably trying to avoid her dreamy eyes. In the living room, among many works of art, a spot after a taken-down painting drew my attention. It was a peculiar view. Clarabelle told me the painting belonged to her mother. One day, Richard simply packed it up and took it to Joseph. Did he want to sell it? Hide it. I didn't get a chance to ask. Clarabelle answered an urgent call and, apologizing, left in a hurry. I went to gather my thoughts. Catherine's death, Richard's disappearance, the unusual arrangements with the Van Havens, that picture. Clarabelle was right. A detective was needed here. But I have my own reason for this. To get Catherine's killer. All in good time. The last lead is Richard's disappearance, perhaps the best-known coffee supplier in London. I'll start by entering into his world. That means turning into a businessman. My first customer will be Richard's old friend and Clarabelle's ward, Joseph Van Haven. Clarabelle gave me his address and phone number. He's an old, experienced trader. I'd better prepare thoroughly. I need to check the investigation board. Now I need to set the new clues and data on the board.
I think that's all I've got for now. Let's see if there are any connections. Have I assigned all the tasks properly?